Hi, Danny Grace and Jude. This is continuous glucose monitoring. So, what are we thinking about with continuous glucose monitoring? Well, the first thing is, usually when you start with diabetes management, it's finger pricks. You lancet your finger, the glucose that's in the blood comes to the surface, you stick a strip on it and it measures the exact amount of glucose that's in your blood, either in millimoles per litre or milligrams per deciliter. And that gives you a snapshot of there and then, but it doesn't tell you where it's going. Is it going high? Is it going lower? Is it nice and steady? Whereas continuous glucose monitoring has a sensor that sits on, well, the, the, the transmitter sits on the surface, but it has a little probe that goes into the interstitial space and measures the glucose that's in there. So it's not in the blood, but the glucose that's in the blood drifts out into the interstitial space. There's about a five minute difference, a five minute lag, but the beauty of these sensors is they update every five minutes and tell you with a trend arrow, is it going higher or is it going lower? So it's important to realize that when you do a finger prick and you have a CGM reading, they'll never be exactly the same, but the massive advantage of a CGM reading is it tells you where it's going and it updates every five minutes. So you can start to plan about how to either prevent lows or prevent highs, or just feel happy and confident that you're in target and nice and steady. You don't get that luxury with a finger prick. You just get a snapshot and you don't know um, where it's going high or whether it's going low. So these are what the trend arrows mean. So it's really important to understand what the trend arrows mean because they give you a little look into the future. So depending on which system you're on, if you're on a Freestyle Libre, a Dexcom or a Medtronic, they've all got a different arrow system. They all basically mean is it rising rapidly, just rising, slowly rising, stable, slowly falling, falling or rapidly falling. But these tags may really mean nothing. What we want to know is where will the glucose be in 10 minutes time? Now you might hear some people saying, oh, a trend arrow will tell you what's happening in 20 or 30 minutes time. They obviously have never used a CGM before because these arrows change every 10 minutes. So it could be going double arrows down and then you look back in 10 minutes time and it's steadied out to just a slight arrow down. So you don't want to be trying to predict 30 minutes in the future. You just want to keep to 10 minutes in the future and make a decision based on what's going to happen in 10 minutes time. And you might need to revise that in another 10 or 20 minutes but the moment you start getting into predicting 30 minutes in the future is when you run into huge problems with either giving too much glucose thinking it's going to drop too rapidly or giving too much insulin think it's going to go too high so it's important to keep to 10 minutes I've stressed that because this is what this table shows you double hour up means it'll be two millimoles per litre higher or 40 milligrams per deciliter higher in 10 minutes if it's only an angled hour up or one hour up that's one higher or 20 milligrams per deciliter higher and then the same on the reverse. And you can already start to see that when you've got a reading and an arrow and you can predict what's gonna happen in 10 minutes, it then allows you the opportunity to take proactive measures to keep that glucose level in range as much as possible. So it's important to um, just keep these ideas in mind, double arrow up, two higher or lower, or 40 higher or lower, and then one arrow or an angled arrow up, 20 milligrams per deciliter higher or lower, or one millimole per liter higher or lower. It's important to get those into your brain because you're gonna need those as you move along. Are the CGMs accurate enough to use now? So the CGMs have come a long way. I used to wear the soft sensor, which was like getting a big javelin and sticking it into you, and the accuracy was really poor. Although the trends was really good, you could see where you were going. The accuracy wasn't good enough to replace finger pricks. Most of the um, devices available now have a good level of accuracy, but they're never gonna match the finger pricks exactly. So for example, if the CGMs are 3.5, most of the time the blood glucose will be between three and four, so within half a millimole per liter. As the numbers start getting higher, say 15 millimoles per liter, the expected blood glucose will be between 12 and 18, so within three. So the higher the number, the bigger the difference between um, the wool there will be, but they will be accurate enough to replace finger pricks now for most of the time. But if you want my best advice, the highest and most rigorous standards for CGM accuracy is the FDA's ICGM approval. It means they have to be very accurate in the hypo range, very accurate in the in-target range, and very accurate in the above-target range. And there's only two systems as of May 2021 that have achieved this level of standard, and that's the Freestyle Libra 2 and the Dexcom G6. I personally use the Dexcom G6 at the, at the moment for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, is because you see the readings in real time, you don't have to swipe. So I can see that mine now is 7.0 and steady. Um, and also, um, you also get the delineation of double arrows up 
um, whereas a Libra only has one arrow, so you only know it's going 1.5 millimoles higher, for example, whereas the Dexcom, I know if it's a double arrow up, it's more than two. So it gives me a little bit clearer information about what's gonna happen in 10 minutes time. However, I tried the Libra 2 and it is a very accurate and a really good piece of kit. I would certainly be more than happy to use that also. So here's the real crux of things. So before I used the CGM, you did your finger pricks, you had only had seven decisions a day to make before breakfast, before lunch, before evening meal, before bed. That's it. Maybe sometimes after meals. And that's it. Just a few decisions to make in a day. So you usually end up correcting with insulin. But now you've got this continuous glucose monitor that's updating every five minutes and you can look at it. And even this is a decision. So I go now it's seven and steady. I'm happy to leave this now for the next half an hour. I don't need to bother about it. If it was seven with the double arrow down, you better believe in 10 minutes time, I would be checking and thinking about another decision. So yes, that could be perceived as being um, a load of hard work to do, but when you're someone who wants to know what's going on and make those micro adjustments, it's really important that now you're looking at maybe 30 decisions a day rather than seven. So you need a new set of tools to manage with CGM rather than the finger pricks. The beauty of CGM also is you get alerts and alarms. So if you're going to be going um, low soon, the Dexcom will tell you an urgent low soon, a predictive low alert. Unfortunately, Libra 2 doesn't do this yet. It tells you when you have gone low and it also tells you when you've gone high. So the way I like to think about this, if you go 10 pin bowling, if you go 10 pin bowling without the barriers on, it's really easy to fall off the edge. If you've got your alerts set at low and high, you know you'll get a ping when you hit those either low or high and you can take action. So CGM can also really give you that reassurance, especially overnight when you're obviously not looking at the thing. So how, how are we going to use CGM to get as much time between four and 10 as possible? Well, this is where the trend arrows come in and this is what dynamic glucose management is gonna be all about. It's going to be looking at the CGM value, looking at the trend arrow and making a decision to if it's going high to make sure it doesn't go high or if it's going low to make sure it doesn't go low. And that's what the dynamic glucose management is all about. And what are we ultimately aiming for? So how, what percentage of readings or percentage of time do we want between four and 10 millimoles per litre or 70 to 180 milligrams per deciliter? The recent suggestions or the evidence base is 70% is a good place to aim for, which is fine. But for me, um, if you want optimal target glucose ranges for optimal health, you're looking at sort of 80, 85, 90. My current is about 99% in time in range most of the time, and that's because I follow dynamic glucose management to the letter. I don't expect for you, Grace and Jude, being young, that you're gonna achieve anywhere like those levels. You're gonna be looking more like 75, 80% until you get um, old enough to really work, find out what works for you. But certainly 70% should be the baseline that we're looking at. So let's take a listen to summary. Pretty much, this is what we've discussed. CGM measures the glucose in the interstitial space, not the blood. It's five minutes behind the blood. But there is a reading every five minutes that gives you trend arrows that allows you to predict 10 minutes in the future. No further than 10 minutes, but 10 minutes into the future. Ideally, you want a Dexcom G6 or a Libra 2 as of May 2021 for ICGM criteria. And now we're going to need a new toolbox for moving from seven decisions a day up to 30 decisions a day. And we're really aiming for as a minimum 70% time in range, but really between 80 to 99%. And that's where the dynamic glucose management is going to come in. How do we prevent the highs and stop the lows and stay in target? So next we're going to start talking about basal insulin, what the function is that is and how we can make sure we have the basal insect correctly. So I'll see you in basal insulin.